Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And I am actually here with someone today who I just recently met. And that's what's so cool about, you know, reaching into the Venom fandom. When I started doing the show and recording these episodes, it started exposing me to other people on Twitter that have these great, you know, Venom collections or they just have a big love for the character. And luckily I came across Randy's page and Randy has this amazing, beautiful collection of Venom toys. A lot of them still sealed in the box, statues, everything. And we're going to talk about today, you know, all that stuff today. Uh, but first I want to give Randy a chance to introduce himself and let him, you know, tell you guys where you can find him on social media so you can see some of this great collection. Okay, uh, my name is Randy, uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Venom Baller. Let's see, Venom, at Venom Baller, yeah, at Venom Baller. I wanted to throw the dot .com in there and <laughs> don't need that. And, uh, so. and is, is that the only place you're, that people can find you right now? Um, it, and it's B-A-L-O-R, right, Baller? Yeah, Balor, okay. uh, like Finn Balor. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, huh? awesome. Uh, now, yeah, it, it's the only the only thing that I have. Uh, I don't I don't do any kind of Facebook or anything like that. I I pretty much just do that. Just just do the Twitter, and that's that's pretty much it. Right. Um, I, I do have a you know I have a YouTube account, but I don't do any videos or nothing. I just watch on there, you know. Well, hopefully you will. Hopefully you will someday, because you got uh, an amazing collection, and we're definitely going to talk about that today. But I want to kind of backtrack a little bit and talk uh, and get to know you a little bit more, because like I said, I don't know you at all. We I just saw your pictures on online, and I was like, you know, everyone I've had on the show so far has either been a friend or someone who I've been in touch with through my my own show for the past couple years. And you were like, hey, look, this is an, someone new. And I was so ecstatic seeing your collection. Uh, but I want to know where you began. So kind of what age were you when you kind of got into comic books? And what were some of the early comics that you remember reading, Randy? Okay. Um, I got into comics really, really young. Uh, I'm thinking I was maybe about five. Um, at first, I got like the, uh, the Looney Tunes comics. Um, that was a big, a big thing for me. I, I love those, and uh, I discovered Spider Man at first. Um, you know, I didn't know that there was a Spider Man comic. I just knew that there was a cartoon. I knew there was there was toys, you know. And then I found, you know, Spider Man comics later on. Um, but as for comics in the beginning, started out with Looney Tunes, uh, and I was very much into actually looking through the comics, not collecting, just reading them and, you know, just following a story or whatever. You know, I didn't actually start, like, preserving them until a little later on. Yeah, I think that's kind of the, the staple. Like, same with me. Like, I at the beginning, I had a handful of comics, and I didn't really think of really to go get more at first. That wasn't my initial reaction. My, my initial reaction was, like you said, I would just read them over and over, the ones I had. And just get really uh, locked into the story. So that that's really refreshing to hear you say that. Um, and I'm glad Looney Tunes actually, if I remember correctly, some of those ones that were in the like the '80s and stuff were really great Looney Tunes comics. Uh, they were really, really great. Um, I was actually, I know it's kind of crazy, but uh, my favorite uh, Looney Looney Tunes character was actually Taz way back then. <laughs> and um, I mean, I actually, I still have. The comics from from back then are not in great shape, of course, but I still got the comics. I've still, and I actually had a a, a vintage a Taz plush, and it today it's worth a lot of money. And I actually was able to keep it in pretty good shape. So um, I've actually got that still. I even have one of Wiley e. Coyote, and they're, they both wow, they're worth a lot. I bet. I bet. <laughs> I, I never would have even, you know, imagine, imagine that. But, um, but yeah, uh, that's where it started for me. Um, it went from Looney Tunes, and like I said with Spider Man, I didn't start collecting Spider Man comic books until later. Mm -hmm. um, X was Transformers and He Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was next. Uh, and 
all the way up to about 87, I guess. About 87. Okay. Um, I started uh, started dabble in uh, other things, you know, other than the He-Man and Transformers. And that's when I found the Spider-Man comics. And, you know, I would just get them or whatever. And, you know, I'd read them. I, you know, I love the, all the action and everything in there, you know. Uh, but, you know, I just... Nothing had really, like, grabbed my attention yet. Like, as, like, wow, that's awesome. Right. You know, not yet. But I'm going to, I'm going to tell you. Um, I want to say it was possibly middle of 89. Okay. Um, I was actually... Uh, hanging out with my friends at my house and one of my friends had uh, a comic book with him it was an amazing Spider-Man comic and I, I, I something caught my attention on the cover it was this this face yeah. it's like he looked like Spider-Man but it wasn't Spider-Man <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like who is that and at the time, he, he didn't even really know. He just had the comic. Right. So, I figured out a way to trade him for that comic book. So oh. I got my hands on that comic. <laughs> nice. So, what that ended up being was Amazing Spider-Man number 315. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, I got my hands on that. And from that point on, I would try to find whatever I could that had him on it. And I would read and everything, and I just thought it was it was awesome. He wasn't like like for a time there, I kind of started getting a little bit bored of Spider Man. And the way Venom was, I didn't look at him as like some evil, you know, character. Even though he was, a, you know, considered a bad guy, right. you know, he's he's really an antihero. Right. But he only really wanted to hurt Spider Man. True. So. So, you know, I didn't look at him, you know, in, in a bad way. And I thought it was really awesome. I am sorry. Um, I thought it was really awesome. He looked like Spider-Man, but he was bigger. Right. Very menacing. You know, he, he had all Spider-Man's powers. I, I loved it. You know. <laughs> they, um, it's funny that you say that the look of Venom drew you in, because we, we've had this conversation on my show many times about uh, the look of Venom. Like, I worked in a, com a couple comic shops throughout my lifetime, and one thing I tell people all the time is uh, you'd be surprised how many young people, like young kids, uh, even, like, you know, you're at your age when you were, you know, in the late 80s, but even younger, like, you know, uh, to where I was, like, you know, late 80s, I was, like, you know, seven, eight years old, and even kids younger than me, like, they there's two reactions people are either instantly terrified of them and i've had guests on my show who looking at venom they're terrified of them even still to this day and then there are the people who are just like yeah his look is what made me fall in love with them and it's so funny to hear those two sides and and that's always the thing there's no middle ground people either immediately are drawn in and kind of spellbound by his look or they're repulsed by it and i think that's kind of some of the magic of the character is that he either pulls you in or he pushes you away. Uh, but uh, but like you said, he's an antihero. He exists in that gray area, but yet everyone seems to have one extreme or the other reaction to him. And I kind of like that a lot. Yeah. Um, so, you know, from that, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. So your um, your, is your dog a big Venom fan? actually does have a Venom shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Good to hear. So, yeah, she actually does have a Venom shirt. So, and uh, uh, if I can find the pictures, or if I can, I'll take a photo. Oh, but, yeah. Post that on Twitter. That'd uh, be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, she does have a shirt. Um, mm -hmm. And like we had talked earlier, you know, she just recently had surgery, and you, you, you can't tell that she recently had surgery, yeah. you know. <laughs> she's, she's tough, but, that's why, she's tough. Yeah, so, but anyway, uh, back to uh, what I was saying, um, yeah, from that point on, you know, I, it's pretty cool I didn't even buy my first comic that had Venom in it. Uh, I actually traded for it. I liked it. I liked the way he looked that much. I wanted to find out more about him. You know, and read about him, and you know, I traded for. I 
can't remember what I traded for it, but I just know that I got it that way. Okay. Um, so pretty much from then on, you know, when I would go to different kinds of shops or whatever, and, you know, I'd go look through the comics, you know, I would always look to see if I could find something that he was on. So, and of course, as you know, he was on 316. Right. Uh, number 316, and he, and the, the uh, um, the following number 317, he was also in that one as well. So I, you know, I definitely picked those up. But it was, you know, it took a while to uh, for him to come back in again. If you remember, it, yeah. it was. It was like three three forty something somewhere in that, around that area. Uh, it was actually, mm, I want to say it might have been like three. I think he was in it again, 331, 332, oh, yeah. and 333. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He was. That was the island storyline, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So there was that, and then the 340s, you know, after that. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, you know, it took a while, but, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I fell in love with the character so much that, you know, I would wait for whenever he would show up again, and he... He immediately became my most favorite uh, comic book character, and you know, like I said, from then on, you know, I'll, I would always look and see what I could find, you know. So every year there would be a couple comics here and there that would come out that he would be in, and uh, you know, of course I got it. But uh, you know, when I first became a fan, the artist was Todd McFarlane. Right. So that's a whole totally different look. Yeah, you know, from the Eric Larson, and so, uh, yeah, I, that's true. Yeah, so that's you know, so by the time like three thirty one, three thirty two come out, he actually had like like uh, shark teeth yes. instead of just like a a smile or what you know. Uh, so he was being drawn different. It made me love it even more. Nice, you know, so. I never had any problems with, you know, how he was drawn or whatever. Just as long as, you know, it, he wasn't he wasn't just thrown on the page. Just however, you know. Right. So so you're not you're not a stickler for the look as long as it's relatively recognizable as the as the character you love. Right. 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 Ah, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. how did how did that lead you? So so now that you were buying the comics like every year, or so you'd go in because like you said at first he didn't pop up that much. But then after, you know, like uh, once Carnage started coming into the, the story, you started seeing Venom a lot. His popularity definitely blew up at that point. So what was that like for you being like, man, I'm having trouble finding this guy to go into a place where now you see him everywhere you go? Oh, God, I loved it. <laughs> um, I, okay, I went to uh, I went to a, a little grocery store mm -hmm. um, beside the highway one time, and this was when uh, they were advertising – uh, the beginning of the Lethal Protector run. Okay. And and I was, you know, I was wanting to to make sure that I got that. And I was planning on, you know, going to the comic shop on the day of the release. And this this is pretty cool. Um, so we go to the grocery store, and the comic isn't due out to like, oh gosh, it might have been a couple weeks away or something like that. So. They had just recently got one of those little um, racks that spin. Mm -hmm. Got the comics, right? So I'm laying there looking, you know, looking in there, and, and uh, lo and behold, I turn it, and there it sits. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I, I'm, I, I can't even speak. <laughs> you know, the book's all shiny. He's there, big teeth, awesome, awesome pose. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and that just, uh, him having his own series just absolutely blew me away. I know. You know? Yeah. Oh, man, I know. I share that feeling. That's so nice to hear. So, do were you like, I'm buying this right now? Like, you, you bought it, right? I'm, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, just because, because of me becoming a Venom fan and, you know, buying the comics that he was in, just because of that, I ended up, you know, purchasing a lot of comic books that are worth a lot of money t today. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, for instance, Amazing Spider-Man number 
won. Oh, yeah. First Carnage. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just, you know, just like an example. I mean, gosh. Uh, I wasn't able to get a hold of number 300, you know, until a little, little time passed where, you know, I was, I could, you know, get my own money. Right. You know, so I could buy from the comic shop. So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I still remember that. Here's day walking into that grocery store, seeing that spinner rack, finding that comic book. I mean, it's like it's Im- embedded into my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And so, and what, roughly how old were you around the time when that book came out? Oh, gosh. Let me think. I might have been. 11, 12, something like that. Okay, all right. So we're, we're pretty close in age then. Um, that's a, I mean, yeah, that time being, a, being like you said, you, you get drawn to this character and then and then you, you're, you're digging for him. You're like, I need more of him, I need more of him. And clearly Marvel heard people asking for more. And so to not only give him his own miniseries, but then just launch him into this whole thing and do Planet of the Symbiotes and these big event books. And like Venom really just became this, you saw toys of him and, and I guess that kind of leads me to your amazing collection because, like I said, I was scrolling through Twitter and sometimes I just follow hashtags or I just look for, you know, I type in keywords and that day I just happened to be looking for a Venom collection and I saw someone who I follow retweeted you and I saw your pictures and I was blown away. So when did that collection, which you have, you know, you have toys that go back to the 90s, like you have you have so much stuff there, statues from Spider-Man 3, like you have, you have all these amazing things on that wall. Did that start in the 90s, or was that something as an adult you went back and were like, I gotta track this stuff down? Okay, this is this is, this is is pretty cool. <laughs> um, okay, I used to frequent Kmart okay. quite a bit back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I had already become a Venom fan. Um, I had already had uh, Making Spider-Man 315, 316, 317, and you know, uh, you know, I was a kid. I loved toys, so you know, I got to the toy aisle, whatever. Um, I actually bought the very first action figure made of Venom oh. off off the shelf. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm actually looking. It's not the the very one. I still have I still have my original. Of course, he's not in the package, but. Uh, uh, I'm looking at him right now. It, he, it's from 1990, mm-hmm. and he's the one where you can push slime through his chest. Right. Yeah. Uh, I got him first, and then the second Venom action figure I got was the was the 16 inch figure from the same series. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that was my very first two Venom action figures. Nice. Yeah, those are good yeah. ones, man. Those are very good ones. Um, yeah. So I mean, I started right. I mean, as soon as his very first figure hits the shelves, I had it. I didn't even know it was out. I just happened to be there, seen it, got it. <laughs> nice. Nice. And then, and then, so that that was the snowflake that became the avalanche, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I ended up buying well, pretty much any Venom action figure I ever seen. Um, you know, I, I've actually I've actually got quite a bit of my original collection from when I was a kid. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at my photos, I did. I'm actually one photo. Yeah, I did. Um, there's actually one photo um, that you'll see like a like a big shelf, and there's a bunch of Venom figures that are not in packages. Right. On, on some of those figures, you, you can actually see a little bit of wear. But those figures, everything that you see there besides like the Legends figures and stuff like that, everything you see there was from when I was younger. Nice. So that's, those, are the, those are the ones you grew up and played with. Right. Nice. Right. That's so cool. Uh, I, yeah, I did not throw them away, did not trade them away. I kept them. So... And I think I did pretty good. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. know, there's a little bit of wear here and there, but hey, I'm I'm totally happy with them. No, you you did. I mean, it's uh, it's funny because our generation is definitely the generation that kind of 
founded the collecting, the idea of collecting. Uh, because before that, like my grandpa and even my, you know, my dad too, like they, they didn't really collect things, you know, like n- nothing that was like, like something that would draw a fan in like that. Maybe they would collect baseballs, like signed baseballs or something, but nothing to the degree of comics. And I feel like our generation, once we got it, once toys got cooler in the eighties and once cartoons started popping up and, um, and then in, even into the nineties, it's like, we grew up in a really awesome time where we, we kind of. Because my mom, you know, she got rid of all my Transformer toys, and now, you know, today she's kicking herself because we could have probably bought a house with them. Um, and so it's it's just funny. Like, so I feel like we're kind of that first generation that that kind of spawned that care that that level of love for something, and it, it's clear in yours. Like, I'm gonna have the pictures up here when people are listening to this on YouTube. I'll have a, one or two of the pictures up so people can see a fraction of your collection. But I want you guys to go to his Twitter account too and see the other stuff he posts because. Yeah, Randy has a just an outstanding collection, and you do. You have stuff open. You have stuff not opened. Um, you have a lot of statues. And before I get into like what's some of your favorite stuff in the collection, I couldn't remember seeing this, but I, I'm sure you have it. Do you remember in the mid '90s or late '90s the the Marvel vs. Capcom video games, and they made the toy two packs, and one had Venom and Captain Commando in it? Did you happen to pick one of those up in your collection? As a matter of fact, it's in one of those photos. It's on the. Uh it's on the wall uh-huh. that has all of the all the all the photos and pictures okay. uh, hanging up. Um, if you can find it, there'll be like a big uh, I don't know what you it's like hanging art of venom that's in that's in this photo. Oh, I see. When it. You're looking at the photo. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. put this image yeah. up on on screen so people can see it. Uh, that was one of my. I love that video game and that really brought back my love for Venom uh, when I was playing that game and I would go to, I was the first uh, or second of my friends in high school to get a car and uh, because at that point I was already working like two jobs when I was like 15 or 16 and uh, and so I was able to get a car and I would take my friends to the arcade every day after school to play Marvel vs. Capcom and I always picked Venom. So when those toys came out I owned it and that was one of my favorite Venom toys that I remember playing with. Yeah. um I, I absolutely, you know, I absolutely love that. I've actually, um, I remember playing, God, I played just about every Marvel arcade game that was out around that time, I guess. Yeah. Um, like to the point to where I would, I don't know how much money I would spend, but I would, I would <laughs> play till I beat it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I love that. Um, I actually bought, bought it on, uh, bought it for PlayStation 1, mm-hmm. um, and I, I've actually still got the disc, I've still got the game, it's in great shape. Nice. Um, I've, I've got that one, I've got Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and 3 Ultimate, <laughs> um, and of course I've got the fourth installment as well. Right. Um, but yeah, um, that figure there that you see that's on the wall in that picture, mm-hmm. the packaging itself isn't that great. So. The reason why is that is my original. Oh, I that's actually, so awesome. that's about around the time I started not taking them out of the package. Okay. All right, so it's a it's a key figure in your collection too, because like you said, that was when it was like, all right, let's start preserving these. And and you do, you have so many great stuff in that collection. Are there any? I'm sure you have a lot of favorites, but like maybe a couple of them right now. Like, what are some of your favorite things? now that you're sitting in your room surrounded by the collection that you just love that you have and you're happy that you have it? Well, you know, of course I, I love them all. Right, um, right. And I'm sure all the original ones that, that you opened, those are probably highest on your list of things that you are so glad you kept and preserved. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. One of, one of them that holds very, very fond memories uh-huh. for me. Um, you're not going to hear many people say this uh, about any Marvel character that was in this toy line that I'm getting ready to say. Um, do you remember? It was from the mid-90s. Uh, it was the Spider-Man animated series. Um, you know, they put out all those toys from oh, yeah. like, uh, I guess, 94 to 97, something like that. Right. Well, they, 
there was like the whole uh, um, the most popular Marvel characters were in this set I'm getting ready to tell you about uh, you'll see in my photos on that set on the same one of the the one that's got all the loose figures on it okay uh, if you look not at the very top top shelf but the shelf the shelf underneath mm -hmm. on the right you'll see like a shiny armor type deal yeah that is the mega armor venom right and it uh, there's actually a little five or six inch figure that's on the inside of that armor right. well that like I had said before that is my original mega armor venom <laughs> that's so cool and I remember finding that at Kmart buying it and I I mean it looks ridiculous but I absolutely loved it <laughs> That's amazing. That's actually that's a great pick. You're right. I haven't heard anyone claim that to be one of their favorites, but I can I, I can appreciate that figure for what it is. It actually is a really cool figure. There was a two that I liked growing up. Um, one of them was there was a Venom that had a, a like a projector on his chest that would show images on the wall. Um, mm -hmm. I loved that one because of his size. If I put him next to a five inch Spider Man, he was massively bigger, so he was more comic book scale to me than the other Venom figures. So I love that one to play with. And then the one that was a Transformer, uh, the Venom Transformer toy is another one of my favorites. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I do have that one. Um, I'm not sure where it is right off. Um, but I know I do have that one. Um, nice. But besides the Mega Armor, uh, I would have to say uh, the 10 inch figures from that same series, the animated series. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I really love those as well. Um, something I, I learned from, from those figures, as you can see in that photo, mm -hmm. uh, I have multiple of those um, like in the background in their packaging. Well, with those, all three of those in the background that are in their packaging, they're all variants. Oh. There's the, the one original, mm -hmm. and then there's two other variants. One is navy blue, like a, a brighter navy blue. Right. The other one is a darker navy blue that has a little bit of a, kind of like a speckle look. Okay. And and, were, were those yeah. sold at different toy stores? Yeah, I got I got those like, oh my god, it probably got one from KB. Right. The other from Toys R Us. Okay. Um, and then the regular one I probably got at Kmart. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's quite nice. I don't think I've, me personally, I don't think I've seen the three of those in a single collection before. Um, until I saw it in yours. And I'm sure there are other people out there that might have that, but I just personally haven't seen that. So when I, I was looking through some of your photos, I'm like, this guy has stuff that I've never seen grouped together before, which just showed me how much you really love this character, which is why I wanted to talk to you so badly. <laughs> um, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, um, this is fast forwarding a little bit, but I'll go back. Oh. Uh, I'll throw some, uh, some pictures up later on Twitter. Okay. So uh, there's some like a tr true being a fan that's that's been a fan like for for a little while at least since Spider-Man three. Okay. At least um, I've got three figures. They are on the bottom shelf, but you can't see them too well in that photo. They're behind the uh, Funko Pop figures. Okay. Um. Three uh, ten-inch Venoms for Spider-Man Three. Oh. Okay. Those three figures. They're they're I got the regular and the two variants. Okay. And not only are they variants in color, but they're variants in packaging. Cool. And I have not seen the variants anywhere else. And when I got mine. They were the only ones that were on the shelf. Nice. Well, I can't wait. Yeah, uh, I'll look for that picture, and I'll try to include it 
in this episode too, when so people can see what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, one one of them is black, the other is navy blue, and the other one is a shade of purple. Oh, oh, okay, all right, sweet, yeah. a purple venom. I love it. Yeah. So, and of course, they're still in their packaging. I, you know, I'm not going to open that up unless I had multiple of each. You know, um, which with some figures I do buy multiples. Yeah. Especially if I actually want to display the figure outside of the packaging, I, then I will buy multiple. Nice. Um, now, is your is your collection? Because I know you get, you know collected and looked for the comics when you were younger, and now you have this amazing toy and statue collection. But do you still buy the comics? And and uh, what are kind of if you if so, what are kind of your thoughts on some of the current comics that have been coming out for Venom? Okay, um, if you can go find my tweet uh-huh. that has the uh, uh, the original pictures. If you go down further mm-hmm. and look through. The rest of the conversations. Yeah, you're going to see some more pictures. These pictures you're going to see if you look close enough. They're of short boxes. Uh-huh. Every short box is a Venom short box. I see that Venom verse. Yeah, I've got, I've got two. I've got two different kinds. Mm-hmm. One is a Venom verse, and right. the other one is the Venom Lethal Protector. Right. Um, and I bought these from my uh, my local comic shop. Uh, I've actually had them for a little bit now, but um, I've actually got ten of those boxes. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. I've got ten of those, and they're completely full of nothing but Venom related comic books. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's so amazing. I've got all of his appearances from Amazing Spider-Man mm-hmm. all the way to like his. One appearance in Nova. I mean, <laughs> nice. I could pull out just about anything out of those boxes if you ask me about it. That's amazing. Um, so, but you know, I've got I have other comics as well, but that's my main thing. I've got ten of those short boxes, and they're nothing but Venom or Venom related or Venom appearances, <laughs> so on and so forth. That's awesome. And so, so is that is it safe to assume then that you you're buying the current run that's going on right now too? Yes, mm-hmm. I've actually I got I got I got something really cool. <laughs> it, it would be really cool if he if he got to listen to this. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Venom, the current run yeah. done by Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. Right. Uh, the editor of that comic book, Devin Lewis. Devin Lewis, yeah. Yes. I have actually talked with him before. Nice. And there was there was a comic book out. It was a, it was a, a variant, and it was hard to get your hands on. It's still kind of hard to get. Um, it was Venom Verse number five. Yes. And Ven- Venom is in the uh, Spider Man number one pose from McFarlane. Right. And. I was having major difficulty to get my hands on that. So I had heard that every now and then that Devin would kind of send a care package out to, you know, what he would consider, you know, real fans. Right. So I looked him up one day. I got to talking with him. And we talked probably for, you know, a couple months here and there, just like tweet here and there, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I asked him, I was like, you know, you, know, you being the editor, you got any of these comics just laying around by some chance? And he, I was very surprised. He said that, that he, that there was actually quite a few different comics from the current run just sitting around. <laughs> oh, man. And so I um, ended up getting a care package from him, okay? And... That care package had three of those comics in it. Wow. Okay. Wow. It was, and that's a, it, it's a one for 25 right. variant. So I ended up, ended up getting three of those from him. I didn't buy it. I didn't pay a cent. He sent three of those. He sent me a bunch of different variants of number one from Donnie Cates. Like we're talking different kinds of virgin variants. We're talking just different, just, Trade cover variants. I mean, just 
Oh my God! And from Venomverse and Venomized, he sent me a big care package. Nice. And on top of that, I'm going. I'll, I'll I'll take a picture of this. Yeah. He wrote me a letter as well. Oh, <laughs> that is super nice of him. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, and I and I've tweeted with Donnie and, and Ryan as well, but Devin, you know, that that right there, that's a cool dude right there. Yeah, I've actually heard a lot of good things, uh, really nice things about the guy. And he, he edits a lot of books I like, like uh, the Spider-Gwen book. He was editor on that. And I think uh, Scarlet Spider by Peter David and obviously Venom. Um, so, yeah, I've heard really nice. I never had the pleasure of interacting with him too much, but uh, I, uh, it, he sounds like a nice guy, though. Yeah, he, he's, he's a very cool, very cool guy. But, uh, you know, he, and he didn't have to send me anything, but he sent me uh, – you know, they call it the, the Marvel Care Package, and they apparently do this, you know, with all their books, you know, every now and then to, you know, like a someone they would consider that, you know, like as a true fan, and they're really, you know, looking for a certain thing. Right. If you're like a big fan, you're really looking for something, you can't find it, if he's able to, he'll help you out, you know. That's nice. So, but, uh, you know, I was one of the few lucky, you know, with that and I'm extremely grateful um, I've, I've even emailed back and forth with him in the past um, he, he very cool guy very cool dude that's good to hear I mean I'm sure they're all great guys it's funny I I, I feel like maybe at some point um, I rub them the wrong way, which is which is totally fine. I, I'm very critical of the Donny Cates run. I'm actually one of the few people that don't enjoy the book. Um, so uh, that's why I like inviting people on that do love it because it's like, hey, I have an opinion, but it's not it's not end all be all. You know, it's like I, I just have a different opinion than everyone else. But I like to let other people voice that they're loving the run because and I and what I do love about the run is that Venom is in the spotlight right now like ever since the movie and then donny kate's taken over the monthly book it's like i feel like there's real um and someone else said this on one of my previous episodes of this show where there feels like marvel's really being extra supportive of the character and so we talk about you and i like growing up in the 90s and seeing venom stuff everywhere for a short while there now we're like in a, a just an a, avalanche of Venom stuff. There is cartoons, Maximum Venom, there's toys, there's Funko Pops, there's statues. Like, we are so lucky to be Venom fans right now, and so that's why I do still support those guys' work, even though I'm not a personal fan of it, but I, I love that there are fans of it, and I love that people are enjoying it. So it's good to hear that you're enjoying it, and that you had such a great interaction with Devin, because I've only heard great things about the guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, that happened and that was that's something I'll never forget nice um, I've got uh, like I said he, he had sent a letter along with it I've got it you know somewhere very very safe you know I'll take I'll take a photo of it and and uh, I'll post it yeah. uh, sometime soon yeah please do uh, it's, it, it's even on a uh, it's even on a uh, a piece of paper with the official Marvel le letterhead Nice. Wow. Okay. So it's a, it's official. It's like getting a letter from the president. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> That's cool. Um, dude, Randy. It, it, first of all, I mean, um, I just gotta say, I one, I appreciate your time, and two, I appreciate your passion. Like, I gotta say, you've probably been one of the most passionate Venom fans I've had on this show, and. I, I'm sure people are going to love listening to this episode. So if you guys are loving what you're hearing, if you like some of the pictures I was able to post up on this while Randy was talking, uh, you know, please follow him on Twitter. Go check him out. Make a friend. That's what the Parasite podcast is all about. You know, I, I kind of call Randy, like everyone in the Venom community, I, call, I refer to us as Parasites. It's obviously a reference to the movie. And so it's a term of endearment. And this show is about talking to people that are either hardcore fans like you or people who have like a, a just like a soft, uh, insulary knowledge of Venom who want to learn more and it's it was great having you on I would say you you are an, a Venom expert and I love your collection and I encourage everyone to follow you to see more of it and as you post more stuff so is there any last word you'd like to say before we head out for the night uh, just keep you know whether you're a big Venom fan or not or you're, you're just loving the, the current run make sure that you uh buy the comic because something that has recently happened kind of sucks and definitely don't want that to happen with Venom. Uh, we don't want him going digital only. Right. So make sure you go to your comic shops, 
pick up the physical copies, let Marvel know that you're still interested in that comic. Amen. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yes, guys, please not only do that to uh, support the comic, but also support your local comic shops. Obviously, with everything that's oh, happening, yeah. yeah, with everything that's happening in the world now, like comic shops and small businesses definitely need our help and our money. And uh, and even though I've kind of was pulling away from the Venom book and not wanting uh, to read it myself, I agree with what you say in your assessment, and I think the book does need to keep going. So I think, Randy, I think you've inspired me to, to continue reading the book and uh, and continuing to talk about it and getting other people's opinions on it, because I think at the end of the day, that's what's important, and keeping that book around for the people that are fans of it is very important. So thank you for saying that, man. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. That, that definitely comes from the heart, too, and I, you know, I do support my local comic shop they actually they go far beyond for me and i don't know if they know how much i appreciate it like i'm the venom guy at the shop okay when i go in <laughs> yeah I, that I, i've already got all the variants pulled for me anything venom it's already there re ready and waiting for me <laughs> nice and what's your shop's name uh it is the inner geek the Inner Geek. All right, so guys, I'm going to look that up, and I'm going to put a link to their website down below. Chances are, like most comic stores, they're doing online orders or probably curbside pickup. So if you're in that area to do curbside, please do that. And if you can give them business online and order from the shop online, please do that too. And, and I'm glad you, you mentioned them so we can give them some love as well. Oh, yeah. They're great. Awesome. Well, Randy, I can't thank you enough for your time, and definitely we'll have to have you back on at some point in the future where we can, uh, you know, catch up maybe when closer when the second movie comes out, and we can sit around and talk about the movies and cartoons and and all the things we couldn't cover on today's episode. If you're if you're down for that. Oh yeah, I've I've still got more stories I could tell or whatever. <laughs> you know, I've I've been you know well I've been collecting Venom since just about the beginning. I mean, so. Yeah. I've got a lot to go over. <laughs> Sweet. Well, yeah, like you said, we got 30 years of history to, to talk about, and we barely scratched surface. So I'll definitely have you back on, and we'll and we'll scratch another level of the surface. So, Randy, thanks again for your time, man. I really appreciate you. Uh, no problem. I, I really did enjoy this. Uh, and thank you. No, you're welcome, sir. And everyone else listening, uh, like I said, his link to his Twitter is down below and also to the Inner Geek store. Check those both out. Become fr uh, friends with him. Uh, he's a really awesome dude, and we'll definitely have him back on the show in the future. And all you guys, leave your comments down below, and as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. As, as always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.